Good afternoon and welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. Dear friends, now let us pray the angelus followed by Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declare unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among us women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among us women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> and the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among us women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of Christ the Son by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross, we may brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, on this most sacred heart of Jesus, on this solemnity, I would like to offer this Mass for the reposal souls of Frank, Elena, Martha, Amato. May they souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us begin the Eucharistic celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, on this special day, let us surrender ourselves to the sacred heart of Jesus and our families, our community, and all those people who are in need of God's mercy, compassion, and his forgiveness. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the content of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ your mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us in everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that font of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people consecrated to the Lord your God. It is you that the Lord our God has chosen to be his very own people out of all the people of the earth. If the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, it was not because you outnumbered other peoples. You were the least of all peoples. It was for love of you and to keep the oath he swore to your fathers that the Lord brought you out from the mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know then that the Lord your God is God indeed, the faithful God who is true to his covenant and his graciousness for a thousand generations towards those who love him and keep his commandments but who punishes in their own persons those that hate him. He makes him work out of his punishment in person. You are therefore to keep and observe the commandments and statutes and ordinaries that I lay before you today. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is the, kind, the Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. My soul give thanks to the Lord, all my being. Bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. It is here he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord does deeds of justice, gives judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known his way to Moses and his deeds to Israel's sons. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord's kindness to those who fear him. The second reading is a reading from the first letter to St. John. My dear people, let us love one another since love comes from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only Son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his Son to be a sacrifice that takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us, and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him, and he is living in us because he tells us to share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son as Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him 
and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love, and anyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, of, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. A heart is a symbol of love. But Jesus' heart was not merely a symbol of pointing to some virtue or quality, but to love itself. Dear brothers and sisters, in today's gospel text, Jesus thanks the Father for, re for revealing to his disciples the wisdom and knowledge of God. As we know in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 15, we are reminded that all of fatherhood and motherhood are coming from God. Dear brothers and sisters, if we have noticed in the first reading, the beautiful words, we have been chosen by God to be his own people. And God sets his heart on us, not because we are powerful, we are talented, we are perfect, or we are wealthy, but he chose us, us, even at this moment, to sit, to be with him is because he loves us as we are. And the same first reading also reminds us, he's a God of the true God, the faithful God, even if we abandon him, but he will never leave us. He's always with us. And the second reading also reminds us, truly God is love. Always we say, there is a connection between the heart and love. We cannot separate. The heart of Jesus reveals God's perfect love for us. It is very true. It's not just merely explained in words, 
people who really experience. That's what we are reminded through this priest of most sacred heart of Jesus, right from the beginning, 12th century, St. Bernard, until now. The feast started that we experienced. That's what in 1856, Pope Pius IX proclaimed this feast as obligation, obligatory feast for the whole church. Dear brothers and sisters, let us take the today's the second part of the gospel words, which is really fitting for all of us. It's not only for Christians, the whole human being, the whole human race. That is, come to me, all you who labor and overburden, and I will give you rest. Dear brothers and sisters, we also receive the invitation from our friends, our families. Just we go, want to go and relax for some time. But one or two days, or one year, one, one, one month, or two months, but not all the times. But Jesus, 24 by 7, all the times he's with us, he's inviting us, come to me. All those who are burdened, not physically, but our souls. He gives us importance. Jesus makes an incredible promise to those who acknowledge him as their Lord and Savior. Dear brothers and sisters, truly God loves us unconditionally. His love is experienced once on the way, mother was carrying her child on the shoulders. Somebody commented her, is he not too heavy to carry on your shoulders? Why don't you make him to walk? Then mother said, no, this is my son. I love him. However, the weight but the mother wants her son to be comfortable. Dear brothers and sisters, however we are astray from God, from Jesus, but the heart of Jesus always looks for us, longs for us, earns for us. This word, come to me, I'll give you rest because he is humble and gentle. Those who are truly simple of heart seek the one thing alone that can sustain us in good times and hard times. Dear brothers and sisters, simplicity of heart is always wedded with a humility. That's what we call this humility as the queen of virtues. Today, let us surrender ourselves to this sacred heart of Jesus and ask to give us the courage to be humble, to be simple, not only in our words, but in our own actions as well. Let us pray during this Mass. Lord Jesus, give us the childlike simplicity and purity of faith to gaze upon your face with a joy and confidence in all merciful love. Remove every doubt, fear, and proud thoughts which would hinder, me, hinder us from rece receiving your word with a trust and humble submission. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, we pray, on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave, himself for, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church sacraments, so that, one over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis Upherb and Timothy Archbishop, Don his auxiliary, and all the clergy. 
Remember your servants, Frank, Elena, Martha, Amato, Amato whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased to throughout the ages, we may merit to be cohes eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory on us us forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Holy One reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold whom who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word. My soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring an everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord, before we have final blessings, let us consecrate ourselves to the sacred heart of Jesus. As I pray for you, kindly pray for your families. Let us receive the blessings of sacred heart. Sacred heart of Jesus, we give ourselves and consecrate to the sacred heart of Jesus, a person, a life, our actions, our pains, and our sufferings, so that we may be unwilling to make use of any part of our beings other than to honor you, to love you, and to glorify you. This is our unchanging purpose, namely to be all yours and to do all things for the love of you. At the same time, renouncing with all our hearts whatever is displeasing to you, we therefore take you, O sacred heart of Jesus, to be the only object of our love, the guardian of our life, our assurance of salvation, the remedy of our weakness and inconsistency, the atonement for all the faults of our life and our sure refuge at the hour of death. Be then, O heart of goodness, our justification before God and the Father, and turn away from us the strokes of your righteous anger, O heart of love, we put all our confidence in you, for we fear everything from our own wickedness and frailty. But we hope for all things from your goodness and bounty. Remove from us all that can displease you or resist your holy will. Let your pure love imprint your image so deeply upon our hearts that we shall never be able to forget you or to be separated from you. May we obtain from all your loving kindness the grace of having your name written, written in our hearts. For in you, we desire to place all our happiness and glory, living and dying in bondage to you. O most sacred heart of Jesus, we trust in you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the Mass is ended. Thanks to everyone. Have a good day. God bless you.